The purpose of this video is to talk about light and pigments. Before we get into most of that, the first thing we have to talk about is this thing called the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum covers a lot of the energy that penetrates the Earth's atmosphere from the sun every day. Um, if we look up here, does it penetrate the atmosphere? Um, some of these things are yes, others are no. Things like radio waves do. Um, certain things like microwaves and part of the infrared spectrum does not. Uh, visible light does. This is the light that we're seeing from the sun. And then fortunately for us, anything on this end of the spectrum does not. So like ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, uh, those things are not penetrating the Earth's atmosphere. Well, ultraviolet rays do to some extent. Um, but x-rays and gamma rays do not, which is good because those are things that can hurt you. Um, if you've ever gone and had an x-ray done, you remember one of the first things they do is they put a lead vest on you to cover your chest and to protect you from being exposed to unnecessary amounts of x-rays during that test. So the easy way to think about this is as the spectrum for things gets smaller, or I guess we would call this the wavelength, as the wavelength increases, so there's less variation here, uh, that's when the energy level of things gets higher and it becomes a little bit more dangerous. The only reason we're talking about this is because the light spectrum, the visible light portion, only makes up a very small part of this. But um, you have to understand that light itself is a wave in order for this to make sense. And different parts of the light spectrum have different wavelengths. So we'll kind of uh, go to a, a simpler image here that just involves the visible light spectrum. Or at least it has a blow up portion of the visible light spectrum. Again, you can see the same setup here. This one's actually shown in the opposite configuration. So these would be things with very long wavelengths down here. The gamma rays have the very short wavelengths at the other end. But still, this gives a nice big blow up of the visible light spectrum. And you can see everything from a wavelength of 400 all the way up to about 800 is on the visible light spectrum. Purple is at the far end, that would be the shortest wavelength. Then red is at the opposite end with the longest wavelength. Beyond red is when you get into infrared, which is mostly used to identify heat um, and things like that. You can see the green part of the spectrum is here, so it makes up, you know, from the early 500s up to maybe say about 580 on our wavelength. By the way, our unit here are nanometers, so they're um, extremely small measurement in the, uh, the metric system. But um, the reason we're talking about this is because plants are green because they absorb every part of the light spectrum except for the green section. So they absorb all of the purple, all the blue, you know, all the oranges and reds. That all gets absorbed. The only part that gets reflected back is green. The reason for this is the pigments that are found in the plants. There's actually lots of pigments, but the main ones are chlorophyll A and B. And if we look at this diagram, it shows us why that's important. So along the bottom, if you notice, we've got the wavelength spectrum again. Chlorophyll A, which is shown in this dark green line, chlorophyll A absorbs a lot of the stuff in the blue spectrum. But then you can see it drops off, so it doesn't uh, absorb far end blue, doesn't absorb any green or yellows. It absorbs a little bit of the oranges, and then it dips off again. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one here. It does absorb some of the orange and reds, but it peaks up a little bit higher. Uh, if we're looking at chlorophyll B, that's our light green line. So you can see these two kind of complement each other. Between chlorophyll A and B, it's absorbing pretty much everything in the blue spectrum. But again, notice it drops off before it gets to the green spectrum. And then this one picks up again, but a little bit more slightly at the orange end of things. You'd notice the area where both of them bottom out is right here over the green section of the light spectrum. Now there are other pigments in plants other than chlorophyll. Uh, Cratinoids is another one of the big ones. We usually don't see these until the fall when leaves begin to change color. Uh, that's actually what you're seeing when they have different colors in them. You're seeing different pigments taking over because the wavelength of light is different as the seasons move on. The, the sunlight's coming in at a different angle and it's of more of an advantage for the plants to use a different pigment in order to absorb more of that light. But even with the carotenoids, you can see it kind of tapers off around the green area. So here we're seeing this is why plants are green, because nothing absorbs the green portion of the light spectrum, at least not significantly. So most of that green light is reflected back. Uh, the tricky thing to think about with colors 
is plants, for example. Plants absorb all of the colors except for green. Green is reflected back. So let's say you're wearing a shirt that's blue. Your shirt has pigments in it that are going to absorb all of these colors, all of the other colors except for the blue part of the spectrum. That blue part is reflected back. So in some ways, the color we see is everything that that object isn't. It reflects those colors back, but absorbs everything else. Uh, keep in mind that pure light is white. So if you have a white shirt on, uh, that's actually reflecting all of the light that is being uh, put onto your shirt, so there are no pigments in there to absorb anything. On the flip side of things, if you're wearing something that's black, black is going to absorb all of the light that's exposed to you. So there will be nothing then that's reflected black, reflected black, reflected back, uh, which, um, which I guess is sort of an appropriate slip there. Um, <laughs> but then uh, that's the reason your shirt or whatever it is doesn't appear to have any color to it because it's absorbing all the light. And what we're seeing is just the spectrum of light that's reflected off of things. So just to, uh, to recap some of these things, uh, for starters, there's two kinds of chlorophyll. There's chlorophyll A, and then there's chlorophyll B. Uh, the chlorophyll is in the thylakoid. So in the thylakoid of the chloroplast. One of the ways that I remember this is that chlorophyll it fills up the chloroplast so sort of a, a trick to help you remember that one uh, there are some other pigments like the carotenoids and things but the main thing that I want you to know from the pigment section is chlorophyll A and B and then the last thing is the idea that plants reflect green light. So if you get those main points, that's mostly what I'm looking for. Uh, that graph that I used in here that shows you like the uh, chlorophyll A, B, and the carotenoids and the spectrum of light that they absorb, I really like that graph. I uh, might see that one again in the future, who knows. Um, as always, everybody, thank you for watching, and I will see you in class.